mesenteric ischemia as the topic. And the mesentery uh, is essentially a very important part of the anatomy. It's essentially tissue that arises from the posterior wall and it attaches to the intestines. And the important part about the mesentery is that the mesentery includes within it very important vessels, arteries and veins. And these veins and arteries supply the intestine. And just like how any artery or vein in your body can become occluded, either with a thrombus or an embolus or atherosclerosis, the mesenteric vessels can also be occluded. And what's important about that is that the intestine actually requires a lot of blood. About 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output is used to supply the intestine. So anytime there's any decreased perfusion to the intestine, this is uh, very significant in terms of its consequences. And most seriously, it can eventually lead to dead bowel if the intestine it doesn't get enough blood supply and this essentially is necrosis. Now let's uh, slow down a little bit to explain this a little bit more. In the mesentery you've got three main vessels. You've got the celiac trunk, you've got the superior mesenteric artery, and then you have the inferior mesenteric artery. And these three are the big players in terms of supplying uh, blood to the intestine. The celiac trunk supplies blood to the esophagus, stomach, and the proximal duodenum. And then the superior mesenteric artery or SMA supplies the distal duodenum, duodenum, however you pronounce it, the jejunum, and the ileum. And then it does supply the large intestine all the way up to the up to the splenic flexure. And then the inferior mesenteric artery supplies basically everything else from the descending colon onward. So sigmoid colon and then finally the rectum. So as you can see these uh, major vessels that are part of the mesentery are very important and the absolute most important of these three is the superior mesenteric artery. Most cases of mesenteric ischemia involve the superior mesenteric artery. So we talked a little bit about the vessels. Now what exactly is happening? Well what's happening are the following unfortunate consequences. Either these blood vessels are being occluded with a thrombus or an embolus or there's some sort of ischemia and I'll explain. So either have an artery that has a blood clot that moves which is essentially an embolus or you have an artery that has a blood clot that is in place, which is a thrombus, or you have a vein that has a thrombus. And all these three things have something in common, is that they're essentially disrupting the blood flow. Just like how you would have uh, pulmonary veins or arteries being obstructed by blood clots or some sort of atherosclerosis, the mesenteric blood vessels can also be affected. And ischemia can happen when you have some sort of low flow state so for example, in heart failure, the heart doesn't pump out enough blood, and as a result, the mesenteric vessels don't have enough blood to supply the intestine. Now what's important to remember is that in a clinical vignette, what type of clues would the patient have in their history that would make you think of mesenteric ischemia? Well, think of things that would predispose somebody to developing a clot. So for example, if someone has atrial fib, atrial fibrillation, we all know, makes a person more susceptible to developing a blood clot. And that blood clot can eventually travel to one of the mesenteric vessels. For example, the superior mesenteric artery. Another risk factor would be uh, if the person is a smoker, Another risk factor would be if some person has already established vascular disease. So think of that uh, as something to look for in the clinical vignettes. So now let's talk about symptoms.
So how will a patient present? It's actually a little more difficult of a diagnosis than other conditions, uh, but I'll paint the classic scenario. You have a patient greater than the age of 50, and the patient has some known risk factors for uh, developing blood clots. So for example, he might have AFib, or he might have peripheral vascular disease, or he might be a smoker, or he might already have um, atherosclerosis of some other arteries. So those are some of the risk factors. And then here are the symptoms. And by far, this is the most common symptom or presentation on a licensing exam is that you have severe abdominal pain that the patient will complain of out of proportion to physical exam findings. So what that means is that the patient will say that he is in tremendous excruciating pain, but when you do a physical exam, there's no abdominal tenderness. So it makes no sense. It's completely out of proportion to physical exam findings. So that, that is by far the most classic presentation. The abdomen will have little or no tenderness, but the patient's complaining of enormous severe pain, and he's telling the truth. It's not a fake. So how do you diagnose it? It's a very difficult diagnosis, but there's one, other than, of course, the history and you know the clinical presentation, fortunately, there is one test that sort of saves the day, and it's called an angiography. And an angiography, for those of you who don't know, is a medical imaging technique used to visualize the uh, inside of blood vessels, the lumen, uh, so you can clearly see if there's any type of uh, thrombus or embolus. And that's really the procedure of choice. Treatment? Well, like any kind of treatment that involves uh, a blood clot, you need to give some sort of thrombolysis treatment to break up the blood clot. And then... If there's an embolus, surgically, an embolectomy. And then long term, the patient needs to be on anticoagulation to prevent any further uh, blood clots, thrombus, emboli. So let's uh, look at some clinical vignettes, see what this looks like as a patient presentation. A 79-year-old man with atrial fibrillation develops an acute abdomen. When seen two days after the onset of abdominal pain, he has a silent abdomen with diffuse tenderness and mild rebound. There's trace of blood on the rectal exam. He has acidosis and looks quite sick. X-ray film shows distended small bowel and distended right colon up to the middle of the transverse colon, which are the following most likely diagnosis. Well, at first it might seem like the question hasn't given you enough information, but let's break this down. We have a patient definitely above the age of 50. He's got a known risk factor for uh, developing blood clots. Atrial fibrillation is definitely a known risk factor, and he develops or presents with severe abdominal pain. Now, there's one thing in this clinical vignette that really stood out to me, and that's this word right here, acidosis. That acidosis essentially means that there's dead bowel. He's already progressed to necrosis, and that's why he's in a state of acidosis. And essentially what's happened is this atrial fibrillation has thrown an embolus, and it's gone probably, if I had to put my money on it, the superior mesenteric artery, because that's the most common vessel involved, and it's blocked the superior mesenteric artery, and as a result, the section of the bowel that is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, which would be the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and the colon, all the way to the splenic flexure, are basically not getting the blood supply they need and as a result the bowel has died and necrosed and as a result he's in a state of acidosis. So that would be mesenteric ischemia. Next question. A 67 year old woman with peripheral vascular disease, bilateral leg claudication and hypertension comes to the clinic because of nausea and severe diffuse abdominal pain that she rates 7 out of 10 intensity for the past two days. Pain is related to meals, particularly lunch. She smoked a pack of cigarettes per day for the past 30 years. Patient has a temperature of 36, pulse of 80, blood pressure of 120. Abdominal exam demonstrates normal bowel sounds, no tenderness, and no hepatosplenomegaly. Lab studies show leukocyte count of 4,000, hematocrit of 47. You should be immediately suspicious of. Well, again, we have a patient who is above the age of 50. Some known risk factors here, 
uh, for developing some sort of uh, thrombotic or embolic event. Uh, she's got some pretty intense, you know, 7 out of 10 is pretty severe, but then you've got a physical exam that essentially doesn't show much. So, and then she also has another risk factor right here, smoker. So you've got a elderly patient with a lot of risk factors presenting with severe pain that's out of proportion to physical exam findings, and that's the hallmark for mesenteric ischemia. And then finally, the last one, a 70-year-old alcoholic male is recovering from a myocardial infarction. On the fourth hospital day, he complains of sudden onset of excruciating abdominal pain that is not significantly reduced by large doses of morphine. He becomes nauseated and begins to vomit and has diarrhea. Patient appears agitated and confused and his heart rate increases. He also becomes hypotensive. Physical exam of the abdomen reveals minimal tenderness. Decreased bowel sounds and moderately enlarged liver. Lab findings, WBC count is elevated. BUN is elevated. Creatinine is normal. Lipase is normal. And the arterial pH shows that he is in a state of acidosis. Most likely diagnosis is. Well, again, a uh, patient that's uh, greater than 50, he's got um, MI, which is uh, obviously caused by some coronary artery ischemia, usually due to atherosclerosis, so that's definitely a risk factor uh, for developing mesenteric ischemia. He's got excruciating abdominal pain, but his abdominal, abdomen in a physical exam shows minimal tenderness, so he's got pain out of proportion to physical exam uh, findings. And then the lab values are helpful too. He's got a state of acidosis, which makes, makes me think that he's got dead bowel and necrosis and that's what's causing this acidosis and most likely again the superior mesenteric artery is probably uh, involved that's probably the part of the bowel that's been affected so all this points to the fact that he most likely has a blood clot that has traveled all the way to the superior mesenteric artery and causing mesenteric artery occlusion so the answer would be D. Acute mesenteric artery embolism.